Good morning, morning millennials. millennials. Welcome to Toast LA, the West Coast Toast first episode. It's Monday for us, but when you're listening to this, it's going to be Tuesday. We hope you had a great Monday. We hope you had um, a great weekend. I hope you either celebrated or didn't celebrate Columbus Day. It's like a very triggering holiday. Um, so like, I know a lot of people like were out of school and like some people were not. I don't know like where society has fallen on Columbus Day, but I just want to be on the right side of history. So, so I'm thinking no. Except that technically like we celebrated Columbus Day because we because didn't we have a show. Off. But thank God we took it off because I was struck down oh my God, by yeah. food poisoning in this town. It's like LA knew I was too excited to be here and they were we're like, bitch, calm down. We got here at 6.45 p.m. And like at nine o'clock, we were like hitting the ground running, like dressed for a movie premiere, going out to a dinner, like meeting all of our West Coast friends. And Jackie was taken down by a salmon sh- something. A salmon carpaccio. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know what it was. We all kind of shared plates. There were a few things I ate more of than others. And when I woke up, I just assumed I was hungover because I was having hungover symptoms. But like, but like she drank like a few glasses of wine. N- really not enough wine to warrant vomiting three times before I fell asleep, vomiting... A- all through the morning, dry heaving. I know this is disgusting. But then I got an IV um, from the IV doc that saved my life. It was actually crazy to watch Mm -hmm. when she started the IV. Like, homegirl could not pick her head up. And by the end, like, she wasn't gagging and she was just sitting up, like, normally. So after the IV, I did not throw up again. Like, I didn't feel great, but I felt like how you probably should when you're hungover or have food poisoning. But it was so upsetting I didn't get to go to the DJT that was but upsetting I heard rave reviews it was so crazy like I don't think I've ever played a theater that was as like important do you know what I mean oh you think like so? it was very historic it was beautiful you know you're like legit when the seats in your theater are red velvet you know Ooh. it was velveteen vibes and it was a great show I got to do a fun entertainment tonight like backstage thing which I'm really excited to see do you know when it airs no I was talking so like fast and annoying like People are going to see it and they're either going to like love me or fucking hate me, you know? Yeah. The Which fast, is my life. The fast is tough. Um, And it was a great show. Lots of toasty vibes out here on the West Coast. It was good. I was like really nervous. Like backstage, like usually I I could walk in front of a people, like a crowd of a thousand or 5,000 and I don't care. But something about like the energy in like LA, it's like the town, the entertainment I mean, industry. It's a town full of big wigs and it's crazy. Like we'll go to a restaurant and okay, probably everyone's a nobody, but there's a chance there it's a somebody in the room and that just like makes you want to be on your better game. And I knew that like my managers and everyone was there and I know they probably invited like important people and I was just like so nervous and I was sweating so much. Like my hair was soaking wet. I looked like when I got off stage, I looked like I just got out of the shower. Like I put my hair in a bun and it was soaking wet. It was disgusting not to be really too graphic yeah. but it was really good really fun I had a great time and we're here in LA and then Friday I head to San Diego and Sunday we have two shows in San Francisco the San Francisco ones I think are both sold out but there's still a few tickets left to San Diego tickets available at girlnojob.com you know I had to get that in there I'm sorry back to your regularly scheduled programming back to your regularly scheduled LA programming we are so LA in this studio right now we like, are so LA it's so crazy big shout out to Nick Vile for letting us you know like use his studio because it's like out here in LA, it's just like no man's land. Like you need to get something done. Like where do you go? Yeah, no, it's really all about who you know. Nick and Vile. What's crazy is I'm learning about LA. Like if I want to be in a movie, a Hallmark movie, like all I have to do is really know someone who like makes those big wig decisions. Well, yeah, it's never about like who's the most talented. No. It's always about like who, who do you know? Whose couch did you sit on? It's you know? all about who you know. It's networking, which is my worst skill. It's your biggest in, weakness. It's my biggest weakness. Exactly. Like in a, that's a great answer for an interview, like for a job when they're like, what's your biggest weakness? And people are like, I'm too prepared. No, people are like, I'm too detail oriented. <laughs> I'm too good at my no, job. I hate people like that. I, actually, I care too much. I actually have a great answer what's for yours? that. Okay, ask me. Let's do like a mock interview. Uh, hi, Claudia. Hi, Claudia Ashray, attorney at law. Wow, thank you for coming in today. No, thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor to be here. So why do you want this job? Well, I don't. Um, But I I need money. But I need money, yeah. (laughs) Okay, and as a worker bee, Mm. what are your biggest strengths and what are your weaknesses? You know, I think my biggest strengths are my abilities to work really well on a team you know i find that i just really work well off you know bouncing ideas off of of others but you know my biggest weakness is something i've really struggled with and it might be something that you've actually noticed it's talking over people i have a very difficult time um making eye contact and i know that it definitely is not a great look and it's something i'm really working on um i'm sure you've noticed it as we're sitting here it's just it's something that that i can't really grasp <laughs> i just want you to know hey, that's not like a bad weakness but there's something so creepy about it it's like i think it's such i a great- can't make eye contact because i'm about to murder no, I think it's such a great answer because like there's nothing wrong with me. Like I could still do my job. You know what I mean? Like when people are like, what's your big, biggest weakness? I'm dumb. Like they, I'm not going to hire you. Like it doesn't affect 
how the, they they see me, but it's also not like I'm too detail oriented. You know, it's not yeah. like a bullshit answer. Like I actually do really struggle with making eye contact with people who I'm like not comfortable with. Yeah, same. So I think it was actually an excellent I'm always answer. like looking around like, oh, I need to grab a drink because I can't network. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Totally. Well, that's why we're failing out here in LA. Have seen the hors d'oeuvres? Yeah, it's like is this I'm kosher? I'm always looking for a cater waiter. Is this event? With hors is this event catered? Yeah. Who's a caterer? Can I get a cater waiter? Um. So here's business as usual. We are going to deliver the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. Oh. And we are going to be graced by a very prestigious set of guests this week. And today is no exception. We have Gary Gennetti and Brad Goreski, power couple, dynamic duo. Truly, like both individually would have loved to have them as as guests together. Like, I can't believe we're being bestowed this prestigious honor. I feel like they don't do press a lot together. Gary has a new book coming out. I got it. I started to read it. It's hilarious. Oh, I'm so Brad excited. is everything. We like wore cute looks for Brad today. Oh, we did. Because um, we like don't want him to judge us and think we're going on an unfashionable podcast. You know, and he's like going to walk in here, see our outfits and leave. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? No, like he's going to be like, Gary, what did you bring me to? No, I put on like a FUPA protecting ensemble today specifically for brad i put on the one t-shirt that i got at the wasteland that is bloomingdale's this past week and you know what it's really changing my game and i don't know if you can see my shoes i just want to give a shout out to my shoes they're really because um they're so fucking cute and i wanted them for so long and then like three seasons later i was able to afford them i'm happy for and you. i love them and this is actually my first time wearing them so no. i think they're gonna be my big la shoe yeah you know because it says like oh i mean business but a little bit of pleasure. But like a little pube too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Okay, um, well. Okay, so let's dive in before we dive in. Before we dive in, is there something you want to share with the class? You know what? It's like been bothering me. Like I have to get, you guys are looking like, Claudia, your chits look so big today. <laughs> chits. <laughs> I was just gonna, I was gonna say jugs and then I didn't know whether, um, people are probably thinking like, Claudia, like your jugs look so big today. It's actually because I have something I've been meaning to get off my chest. Okay. Please share. Today's episode is brought to you by Legacy Box, one of our favorite sponsors and truly one of the most genius ideas. Like I, I, every day I want to think to myself, like how did I not come up with Legacy Box? People? No, it's true. Are you okay? I have to pull my skirt down. Oh, are we showing Vag? This is not that Am type of show. Am I showing cellulite? If you've been seeing my cellulite this time, she's nodding. I have cellulite. So Legacy Box is an amazing company that turns your old home videos, cassettes, like old ass fucking things that you don't know what to do with, but like has important, you know, memories on. They take care of all of it. Basically, you send your Legacy Box filled with old home movies and pictures. They'll do the rest professionally digitizing your moments onto a thumb drive, digital download, or DVD. They have easy to follow instructions and safety barcodes included for every item. You receive all your original recorded moments back along with a perfectly preserved digital copy you get personalized updates at every step receive up to 12 personalized email updates legacy box is the world's largest most trusted digitizer of home movies and photos over 450,000 families have trusted legacy box over a decade of experience and all the work is done by hand right here in the usa if you have ever tried to get like a moment of yours off of a vcr and like had to go to best buy and like buy this adapter that doesn't work and then like literally just want to blow your brains out good luck this this product is for you it's actually really genius and i can't believe i didn't think of it there's never been a better time to digitally preserve your memories. Visit, visit LegacyBox.com today to get started. Plus, for a limited time, they're offering our listeners an exclusive discount. Go to LegacyBox.com slash toast to get 40% off your first order. Go to LegacyBox.com slash toast, and you'll be able to save 40% off today. Get started preserving your past. Sign on, like get to know your old self and realize that you haven't changed that much. No, that's my favorite thing about watching old home movies. It's like, you're the same, I'm the same. The Snatcher is the same, snatching everything up. And Olivia is the same. In charge. It actually really depends on like, you either look back and you're like, damn, I'm the same person. Or you either look back and are like mortified and you're like, is this what I'm like? No, there are some times when I'm mortified where I'm just fat <laughs> is really all it is. <laughs> like it's not about personality. But most of the time, like what you realize is that like, the more things change, the more they stay the same. By the way, I'm, I'm glad I'm joking. Are you, like, nervous? I am nervous. I, I'm nervous. Well, like, I don't get nervous and, like, I don't know why. Like, I just feel like there's, like, new people watching this show, like, in the studio. Like, I don't know them. And, like, I'm just feeling nervous. I'm nervous. Like, I have cellulite that I don't know which way it's coming out of. Right. Like, and honestly, like, sitting in a position like this in a short dress, like, I'm just not, I'm not one of those girls. Like, some girls thrive for, like, a short couch with, like, a dress on. Like, I'm just not her. Like, you know what I'm some much people do that, of, I, like, that I want to try is, what? like, sitting hold on no i know what you're gonna do with your your legs back okay everyone say a small prayer she's gonna move is she showing her vagine oh cute that's cute does she look good or do i look like i have a peg leg (laughs) (laughs) i like it i like it you like well satcher how does it look hi satcher can you talk (laughs) (laughs) we're talking to you (laughs) okay okay but like skinny one leg is the one leg i have skinny it's oh, better God. the other way. Um, 
No, but I need to use it. Oh my God, this is so dumb. You guys, we have a show. We we we're wasting precious daylight. Let's jump into the Fast Five stories that you gotta know. You just gotta. Before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. Okay, first story. It's the story everyone's talking about. It's really the fast one story of the mm-hmm. week. Joe Giudice lost more than 50 pounds during his prison stint. He has been released. He has been deported. It's all so crazy. And if you've seen the pictures, it's even crazier. That's Yeah, it's like the news of him getting deported is nothing compared we, we, to the we photo. We saw this coming. But what we didn't see was a 50-pound weight loss. Oh, my God. It's so crazy. A lot of people are making comparisons that he looks like Mike the Situation, which I definitely see. He's like an older, older Mike. Um, I just, I saw a picture of him and I was shook. And then I was like, maybe it's just like a weird picture. And then Gia Judice put up a picture of her FaceTiming her dad and he looked even crazier. And I'm like... Who is this? It's not even like when people lose weight, they look different. But like he has a brand new fotch. He has a brand new fotch. It's shocking. It it really is. It's two different people. It's weird to see. Yeah. And I guess I I never thought of him to be like an out of shape person. Mm -hmm. I just always thought he was like he was stout. Like some people are just built that way. Like, yeah, he had a big belly, but it was like hard. (laughs) You know, that's it. It like wasn't soft. It was like made of salami. (laughs) Yeah, It was made of prosciutto. Yeah. So I didn't ever thought like I thought he was like bulky and like in shape. You could never say that about about a a woman. woman. (laughs) No, you can't. But it's fine. We were oppressed. She had a belly made of prosciutto. So I just find this whole scenario like to be so shocking. And they're all posting a lot on social media. Gia's posting, Teresa's posting. But they seem, I'm like seeing their Instagrams and then I'm seeing like conflicting, you know, stories in the press about how they're devastated and like are running back to Italy to find him. But then it's like, Teresa took the kids to like a water park, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's conflicting for them. Like, how do they handle it? Like, do you stop your life and go back? I don't know. They haven't seen their dad in so long. I don't think that you do. And they've had a lot of time to grapple with this decision. Maybe they have a plan in place. Right. And they are being, like, sort of public about it, like Gia posting that photo. So I think they have a plan of action. Um, And is it confirmed he's been deported and he's not allowed back? Or he just has to go to Italy while his case is in limbo? Oh, I don't know. I mean, the pictures of him are being taken in Italy. Yeah. So he's definitely there. I don't know if he has to stay there. Also, this reminds me that when we got off the plane in LAX, right in the jet bridge, there was two ICE um, officers like standing there. And I feel like they were like waiting to deport someone. Like I literally couldn't stop thinking about it. It was making me so sad. No, it was really crazy. I know. And they They, like looked so scary. I I was like afraid. Yeah. They were about to snatch Snatch, snatch it up someone. and it was really sad i couldn't something about it justice um anyway back to judge Udice. like is this the saddest thing in the world no but like it is sad that like they don't have their dad and like he paid his time for his crime mm-hmm. and it should be enough but it's not it's like a very hot button issue also like people are on other either sides and it's like it's turning into like a political conversation as everything does about just like jail time yeah in and yeah and, and the criminal and the criminal justice system. Right. Speaking of, did you watch Kim Kardashian's Eat Your Hollywood Story? No, I had all these big plans of things to watch. Like yesterday when I was struck down and all I could watch was... Um, the Inside Tal- of Your Eyelids. Talladega Nights with Ricky Bobby. <laughs> what? I fucking love that movie. Have you seen it? What? The Legend no. of Ricky Bobby. It's with Will Ferrell where he plays... No, a, I know what it is, where but I've never seen it. Where he plays an overzealous NASCAR driver. I've never seen it. Oh my God, it's incredible. And our girl, um, Leslie Bibb, is in it. Sam Rockwell's wife. Oh yes, actually, um, also... Also Amy Adams. You know the movie... You know the song. I think that's where she got um, to start. You know the the Kanye song, "Blank in Paris." Mm-hmm. There's this part in the um in the song. It's like he doesn't even know what that means. Nobody knows what it means, but it's provocative. And Ben was watching Ricky Bobby, and it's from that movie. He like took a snippet. It's kind of how like Taylor Swift in the beginning of London Boy has Idris Elba saying on oh, my scooter. Oh wow! He took like a a little piece and put it in the middle of the song, which I thought was interesting. That is quite interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so no, I didn't watch Kim Kardashian. I didn't watch Nexium. I also need to watch Jeffrey Star. I'm getting everyone on the Shane Dawson Jeffrey Star train. But I have it all downloaded. It's so good. I cannot believe how rich Jeffrey Star is. I'm so jealous. Like he lives in the same gated community as all the Kardashians. Wow. Yeah. And oh they like, God. they that's went in- like, that's a real motivation there. Yeah. You know, it's like, I want to work as hard as Jeffree Star so I can live near the Kardashian. And honestly, Jeffree Star's boyfriend, Nate, is so hot. And like, the, he doesn't really like get involved in the series, but like, he pops in every now and then. And he like, obviously, is very invested in like his boyfriend's business because he knows so much about like color swatching and like makeup palettes and like formulas. And it's just like really endearing and like makes him really hot. He's very good looking. That's super cute. I'm like, I'm like, a big fan even though when it comes to, like the whole james charles like tati thing i was like really not on jeffree star's side but i think that's part of like being a youtube stan it's like you never know where to go I, yeah but i think that's just fine in general and i think honestly your biggest cross to bear which i hate to remind you of but this is like what it all comes to is like kim versus taylor oh I, no, you can like way. love someone and you don't know where you stand on the conflict very much kim versus taylor like on my gravestone it will, will be my cross like, to this bear. is what took her down this yeah. was cause of death kim versus taylor it's so true and it changed the trajectory of her career forever 
Yeah, and the, and the person she is of, of your career. So true. You know, and I yeah. think that will always be your cross to bear. Thanks for rubbing it in. That's that's like the origin story of your cross to bear. Right, so right. James versus Jeffrey is just a symptom yeah. of not being able to make your mind up on Kim versus Taylor. And that's the thing. I feel like in today's day, day and age, we're conditioned to like choose a side and cancel culture. And it's like, why? Why do I have to? Right. And it's like, I wasn't there. I so choose not to choose. I choose not to choose. Okay, we got to speed things along. Praying for the Judice family. We are. Um, but I'm actually like really happy for him that he lost 50 pounds because he looks great. And that seems like a very, like, s- very small, small silver, silver lining. lining. Yeah. Okay, next story is um, called Bachelorette alum Mike Johnson asks Kiki Palmer on a date after Demi Lovato thing- fling. But it could also be called the cringiest story I've ever read. It could be called... Ooh. It could be called Mike Johnson should never be allowed on a talk show, let alone GMA, yep. ever again, because he totally abused his time there Awful. and used it to ask um, Kiki, Palmer. Kiki Palmer on a date. Who was the new host? I think we spoke about this on the show already about how she joined Strahan and Sarah like full time, which I think was an interesting choice um, in a good way. And so basically they're just like talking and all of a sudden he just like asked Kiki Palmer out. She was so shook. It obviously was not planned. It was incredibly uncomfortable. Um, I'm now like officially like dislike Mike Johnson. Yeah. I think it was one of the weirdest, thirstiest, like loseriest things to do. It was it was atrocious. Like, it was atrocious. <laughs> it's a perfect word. It was vile. <laughs> And what's craziest is that like Kiki was obviously like such a gracious queen about it because she's a gracious, but queen. she was not interessant. No, no, that's the, that's the best part. It's like you put yourself out there in the most thirstiest way, only to be completely shut down. Yeah, and of course she was like so gracious where she didn't even say no, I'm not interested. Right. She was like Mike, she hand. was like I'm working. Yeah, but it's also like bitch, I'm working. Is this not sexual harassment in the workplace? I was just you gonna say me out on a date. I would love to hear the toasters' opinions, like weigh in on where does this cross a line. And by the way, you have to watch the video because at first I was only going to read the headline and the story, but you can't even read what was said because basically everyone's just laughing and cringing you the whole time. Find, you have to feel the awkwardness. You have to feel the awkwardness from, for yourself. And it once again goes to show that he was not fit to be The Bachelor. Yeah. He's clearly not dating Demi Lovato because he's asking other women out yeah. on national television. And, and I think Demi Lovato was probably really turned off to the fact that like he was out here telling everyone that they kiss and that she's a good kisser. Well, the conversation started with him saying, I made a mistake. I don't like dating in public. But if I were to ask you, if we could go on a date in public, da oh da da. God. So it's like you made the mistake, and here I am making <laughs> yeah. it again. By the way, so in your opinion, does this cross a line? One thousand. In terms of inappropriate behavior, I okay, totally agree. Here, let's put it this way: say we had a guest on our show, and and one of us like was single and not married, and someone asked us out like on our show, and like the chance maybe it was someone you wanted to ask you out, so you'd be excited. But like, say it was someone you didn't think of, and now you're put on the spot on your own show, and what are you going to be like? rude i don't know i'm like so abrasive that like i wouldn't i wouldn't feel like i was being harassed but just like kiki palmer's a pjom and like i just felt like she was uncomfortable like it's not like it's not as aggressive as harassment but it's discomfort yeah no it's inappropriate workplace behavior like hr is all over this it's workplace misconduct i wonder if there's like any kind of outrage about it I haven't seen any, but I've also been offline because when you have food poisoning, you also can't look at yeah. your phone. I so. love Kiki Palmer. And you know what I really like about Kiki Palmer now that I think about it is that she's gotten so far and she hasn't like used the tactic of like dating a celebrity to like even, you know, tr- like expand her career even more. Like even if she did go on a date with Mike Johnson, like she could probably thirst it up, like get some Instagram followers. Like it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for her like publicly, but she doesn't do that. Like she gets where she gets based on her merits. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. No, I love this new phase of her career where she's just the hostess with the mostest. And where she's getting respect. Like we've been, we knew like she deserved respect from the second she walked onto the True Jackson VP set. Of course. And then that's where she met Snitch Jackson. Yeah. The P, the president. (laughs) The VPA. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I really like her. I think this is really disgusting. And and honestly, I I am not into Mike, John, Mike Johnson. I'm sure he's a yeah. nice guy, but this is like so out of touch. Like in this climate, you can't be doing shit like this. And Mike. also like as if everything he had done until this point like wasn't cringy enough, like his Twitter account. His Twitter account, his comments on Demi Lovato's Instagram, his telling the world that she's a good kisser, like him being so like, you know what? He's he, he's weird. He's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just like remembering other things like that we've read, like someone in the toasters when he's someone in the toasters said they like eavesdropped on his date with Demi Lovato, yes. and it was just like weird. Yeah, <laughs> and and honestly, it makes a lot of sense. There was like mass confusion as to why he wasn't chosen as the Bachelor, and now I feel as though there's no confusion. No, none whatsoever. We so, doubt we doubted Bachelor Nation, and to be honest, they were right once again. Once again, oh my God, Snatcher wasn't here when we reported on Peter. Breaking his face. Oh, yeah. Snatcher. So but dramatic. The, everything that I'm hearing about it is making it seem like it's less and less of a big deal. Um, like, he just, like, like cut right himself. Online, like, blo- like, yeah, like, up. Chris Harrison keeps saying, like, it's a nothing burger. Yeah. And so, they weren't filming. 
they might not even address it. Yeah, he'll just like even show though they up with like stitches. live to make like a mountain out of a molehill, they probably will address it and like have a fake ambulance be like, well, well, you know, they live for that. They really do. Okay. Well. Switching gears, I'm about to um, hit you with the saddest story I've ever read in my whole life. Oh my God, I know what it is. I'm like, I want to cry. Please, no. Because Julianne Huff posted this weekend that both of her fucking precious gems of puppies died on the same day. And at first it was confusing because they're like three years apart. We were like, maybe they were soulmates and one couldn't live without the other and then they both died. That does happen. Like when you when you have two dogs and one passes away and they've been living together for so long, the dog's stomach can flip and it can like, it's basically like dying of a broken heart, which is like the saddest concept of all time. Yeah, it's also like what happened in the notebook. Like Allie dies right. and, and Noah dies next to her. Right. And also those are the same names of the people from the affair. Just something to think about. Wow, that is such an interesting point. Jackie's now re- like starting the affair. She'd never watched it. That's it's is garbage. Great, Don't waste your time. Great point. Allie is the mistress and Noah is the husband. Yeah, that's right. Interesting. Very. Anyways, but then uh, Brooks Leach, her husband, took to his Instagram where he geotagged a photo as dog heaven as if it wasn't like sad enough. And he said that there was a tragedy that happened. So something happened where both the dogs died. I was reading a rumor, unfounded completely, but makes sense mm-hmm. that it was a coyote that got both of them. Yeah. But either way, it's the saddest thing I ever heard. Her dogs were so fucking cute. Her, she like, was like, like who all of us Cavalier dog moms like looked up to. Mm-hmm. And she wrote a caption that like, if I read the whole thing, I'll probably start I crying. know, don't. It's so sad. If you want to go check it out like and like put yourself through that kind of pain, like feel free to go for it. But it was so beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, I hope these dogs are just like over that rainbow and just like chilling in doggy heaven like i hope they're happy like the whole concept together the whole concept of dogs dying might be one of the saddest things and like it's just like where do dogs go you know yeah and like i always think about how i sometimes wish i never got a dog because i'm going to have to say obviously like one day like put up like go through that and like why would an instagram why would anyone put themselves through that yeah but it's like because of all the love that you get every single day and like I, it's tough i don't know and i, I wonder if like all dog you owners could say that always about, you could say that about life like why do we bother continuing on when the end result is just death why no, have children like, well because your children are supposed to outlive you yeah you know to carry on but it's like what's the point i don't know man i know i just wonder if all dog parents a little like, too think morbid. about the eventual death of their dogs because that's literally what plagues my mind at night like i cried about i cry before bed every night thinking about like theo dying oh my god i want it like just saying the word theo dying like Stop. i, I want to die Stop. he's gonna live forever no he is actually though Stop. he drank from the tuck everlasting fountain do you remember tuck everlasting yes i fucking do i think about that fountain all the time yeah me too like would you really want to drink original it twilight um at the end of the day no because right. then i would be like a freak and who like doesn't age <laughs> right and then, yeah, but then like you have to live forever you know and like life is good but like it's exhausting life is hard yeah life hopefully for most of us is long yeah I'm good. I'm good. And I want to like experience, you know, the aging All process. the stages. Yeah. And like, we're, I remember reading that book in an elementary school and just being like, I want to drink from the fountain. Yeah. And now I think about it, it's like, no. And if I was like, I would drink from it a few years ago, but now I have these crow's feet. It's like, <laughs> I don't need, I don't need to keep them. And I just want to get more so I can get Botox. So Alexis Bledel was the girl, right? Mm-hmm. And who was Tuck? Um, You know who it was, Mr. Callahan. Excuse me? Mr. Callahan. Oh my God. Victor Vin- Garber. Victor Garber? is in Tuck Everlasting. I'm 99.9% But he's so old. Sure. He, he didn't play her love interest. Oh no, not her love interest, but I think he played the dad. Who played- Victor Garber. Opposite Alexis Liddell. That movie really launched Alexis Liddell's career and she looked so beautiful and angelic we in We should movie. watch that movie. I know. I don't even really remember the premise. Obviously, I know that like they drank and lived forever. It was pr- pretty much just Twilight. Yeah. The guy was Jonathan Jackson. Wow, he went nowhere. Nowhere. Joshua Jackson? Jonathan Jackson. Yeah, I don't know him. I don't know her either. We know him, Margo? He's Avery. He's Avery from Oh my what? God, from Nashville. Oh my God. Who's Avery? Uh, he was, he eventually ends up, spoiler alert, with Juliet, but he was dating Scarlett in the beginning and he was her mean boyfriend. Wait, mean boyfriend? I thought she had the nice Gunner, boyfriend. No, she had Avery first, who like, who was mean to her. And then he like slept with someone. And he was like, he was out of control. He like had a band and he was nuts. He had to work on his art. It okay, was crazy. But you know who was really out of control? Scarlet. She was the worst character in Nashville. Oh my God, a hundred percent. Like she, honestly, in the real world of Nashville, like she never would have gone anywhere because she was too goddamn annoying. Yeah, no. And you know what? In Nashville, she didn't go anywhere either because <laughs> she was too goddamn annoying. <laughs> totally. By the way, I got Botox. Did it start working yet? Uh, you, Are my brows you moving? You still have a little coin slot ha- action. Fuck. But um, it's good though. It's natural. Yeah, no, because you know I'm a comedian. I got to be expressive. Yeah, 100%. I was thinking about almost not getting Botox. 
No, don't. Yeah, but it wasn't that. worth it. Like my show, my show's good enough. I don't. Know. I actually was. I happened upon some of my old Snapchats from like three years ago, where I used to just talk ad nauseum about nothing and be really expressive. And my forehead was out of control. I think really? I got the bad forehead wrinkles from Snapchat. Yeah, from like having something to say all the time. And also, like when you're I'm using about those to filters. Fall off this couch. <laughs> <laughs> because you are sitting literally because, on the edge 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 of the couch because i'm trying not to get the sun in my face why don't you just move to the middle okay. of the couch Should I, <laughs> she's gonna move they're okay? telling me to move to the middle you guys we're gonna get this right yeah it's just like i'm it's, sorry it's la you. man it's you know what it's really a blessing and a curse this la light because yeah. it's there when you need it so much better snatcher says so much better okay um by the way, we were talking about Julianne Huff's dogs. Like, we went on an incredible um, tangent here. About Tuck Everlasting. I wish that Theo could drink from the Tuck Everlasting pond. But then one day, would he, would have, find... he would have to live without you. Yeah, which I think he could do. He's very much like a love the one you're with kind. And in my in my old age, I, in my will, it would be like, okay, Theo's going to live with yeah. Snitch or something. I guess he could be like every, your dog for like all of your descendants. Yeah, I guess. But maybe like when you go to heaven, like you see your dead dogs. Maybe. That sounds, by the way, that literally sounds like the definition of heaven. <laughs> yeah. Like being, like I would be up there with like daddy, grandpa, grandma, and Theo. Theodore for Chapman. Also, now that I think of that, it, the movie Age of Adeline is like Tuck Everlasting with dogs. You know, Age of Adeline was actually a great movie. Yeah, except when she loses all those cavaliers. Yeah, but it was like a weird film, like the way it was marketed and... I mean, everything she does is weird. Yeah, right? She's like, in so many fake movies. The it's shark crazy. movie, you remember the one? And like the whole billboard was like her stranded on the rock. Wait, and what about the one she deleted her whole Instagram for with Anna Kendrick oh, that went yeah. nowhere? Uh, her name was Emily or something? Yeah, like, where's Emily? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like what? Weird marketing. It's so weird. Yeah. It's like fake movies. It's like, as if it's like when people make restaurants so that they could like, you know, like as a front. These movies are Money fronts. Money laundering. Yeah, These yeah, yeah. These movies are fronts. Yeah, just it's a front for the fact they want to pr try and prove like she's not locked up in a cage when we know she is. Exactly. And Ryan Reynolds swallowed the key. <laughs> <laughs> like the movie was <laughs> the movie was filmed in the cage. Right, 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 right. No, no, That's he let her out temporarily. Like green screen. <laughs> yeah, he let her out temporarily, and, and then uh, swallowed the key. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh my God. Our next story is just like a fun one um, about two things that we love. Tim Tebow and the keto diet. Mm. Because Tim Tebow has been on the keto diet since 2012. Wow. Quote, I miss my mom's cooking. What? Tim Tebow says he's one of the original fans of the keto diet right after Ben Saffer. Yeah, the right. former NFL player tells people that when he tried the carb cutting diet seven years ago, he didn't know a single other person that was on it. Quote, I was the first person I knew in the beginning of 2012 to do it back when it was just called Atkins. Like, right. Like it's, it's always it's been not a that thing. crazy. Low carb. It's not like it's not new. Can I just tell you that? Um. You were holding your iPad upside down and like, I'm sure it was fine for you, but you looked like one of those girls who like reads a book upside down. You're like, what is this? No, it's like <laughs> someone in a movie who like is so lazy. Yeah, right. They can't even make sure it's Or correct. like they're trying to sneak, like spy on someone. So they're like reading a fake book. <laughs> like that was you. <laughs> no, but in my screen rotated. Yeah, so no, I'm sure. Fun. I'm sure. That's I didn't so, think you were reading the story upside no, down. No, it's like, um, it's like in the house money when she's like with the menu. Exactly. exactly. I'll have one mahi because I'm not that hungry. Oh my God. He's an Austin Powers fan. He says, quote, you learn carbs are the enemy, <gasps> Tebow explains, but admits that there is one special meal of his mother's that he misses most. It was something called pizza pie. A pizza pie? Yeah, I don't think that's your mom's exclusive, Tim. <laughs> it was made with this crusty, huge dough on the outside. We had to switch the crust, find new alternatives. Oh my, that sounds awful. Like you can cheat every now and then. I want to talk about Tim Tebow. I would, I mean, I want to talk about Tim Tebow every day. And the weirdest trajectory of anyone's career, like, ever. Like, when I first heard Tim Tebow's name, he was, like, gone viral because he prayed every time, like, a touchdown happened or something. Like, people, yeah, like, and, like were, yeah, people were, like, living for his precious vibes. And I totally was here for it. And he was turned out to be, like, so handsome. Every celebrity wanted to date him. He was going to every event. And then something he was happened. He a virgin. Where, oh, right. He was so interesting. And then something happened where he fell off the face of the earth and nobody yeah. ever cared about him again. And now he's almost like regarded as a universal loser. You know who that happened to also? Who? Caitlyn Jenner. Yes. I mean, she was a pioneer until she wasn't. <laughs> no, it's the craziest thing. She went from a pioneer to like an actual no, joke. And where like everyone was so interested, like you could pay millions of dollars for a paparazzi photo of her. Like she was uh, at... She was at Pride in New York. She was at a club and it was like the biggest deal ever at PhD. Do you remember? And then one day everyone decided they just didn't care about her anymore. No, not only that, that they fucking hated her. <laughs> like Tim Tebow people don't care anymore. Like yeah. people fucking hate no, Kendall no, no, Jenner. But there I mean, was a moment where people like, I think. Caitlin. 
I think people hated Tim Tebow. And now it's just um, indifference. Yeah. That's almost worse, like as a famous person. 100%. Um, but do you remember when, before Caitlyn Jenner actually came out as transgender, like there was a helicopter paparazzi picture of her on her Malibu like deck wearing a dress? The black and white dress. Yeah, the black yeah. and white striped dress. And then it was like on the cover of the Daily News New York Post. Like that was so crazy. That was so crazy. And like, and honestly, there's something like that nobody really talks about incredibly immoral about that. Like technically outing someone. No, 100%. And I think after the Diane Sawyer special, everyone in the world, like including myself, like, felt ch- do i have something on my face no i'm i th- think i'm breaking out in hives <laughs> oh wait what's wrong? i'm so fucking itchy oh my Maybe god it's a ginger shot i you know what i fucking hate la okay okay well we have a few more days here so yeah i know s- hold it down no more ginger shots for me it um, certainly wasn't the mcdonald's no, i think that caitlin jenner's diane sawyer special really changed a lot of the way that people talk about um other people yeah and it was like gossip it was like hugely transformative it's like how you know minutes decades happen in minutes minutes happen in decades or whatever like it takes well said. it takes so much time for something to change but then once it does it happens overnight yeah that's how i feel yeah well tim tebow is what is what we were trying to say yes are you ready for a fifth and final story because so a, fast i just really want to talk to gary and brad i have so many questions the toaster has got so many questions for them <gasps> gary's here I'm, gary brad is here you look so cute he, Get it together for the interview. I will. Okay, okay let's, yeah, let's run through. Itching. I have busy things to do. Fifth and final story. Police in Japan arrest pop star's stalker after he analyzed her selfie and used the reflections in her eyes to find her address. What? It's like uh, literally an episode of Black Mirror. They arrested a pop star stalker. The pop star found her address by re- using what was reflected in her eyes in her selfies. That's so freaky. Is that creepy? not so crazy? A man, now you have to edit all your pictures to blur out your people's. Oh my god! A man arrested on suspic- suspicion of stalking Where was this? in uh, Japan. Yeah, people in America aren't that smart. <laughs> yeah, no, but now they are. A man arrested on suspicion of stalking a female pop idol used the reflections of her pupils in photos she shared on social media and Google Street View to find where she lived. Tokyo police declined to comment on the specifics of the investigation, but confirmed Friday the 26-year-old Hibiki Sato was arrested September 17th on sus- suspicion of indecent behavior in connection with stalking and causing injuries to the 20-year-old woman. Uh, the police official who spoke on condition of anonymity is often, uh, as is often policy at <laughs> Japanese bureaucracy. Okay, whatever. Okay, Let's I, just talk about how fucking weird I gave this you is. what you needed to know. And also, it's like you can try as you want to like hide you where you live and like post not in real time. Like someone's coming to your house. Like this yeah. is the lesson. Like someone is always on their way to your house. That is just so crazy. I mean, now I have to edit my pupils. Yeah. Great. Great. I mean, I edit everything this anyway. This is a good lesson for all celebrities, but like, holy smokes. Yeah. Did you also hear about that K-pop star who like very suspiciously died? At died at 25, yeah. Yeah, very weird. Very the spooky. The K-pop world is very like Scientology vibes. I feel like there's so much that goes on that like nobody talks about. No, I feel like they talk about it, but I guess we only hear about it. This isn't the first K-pop it. person who like recently passed away. She was 25. Like you don't just die when you're 25. No, which is why like we'll keep tabs on the story. Yeah. I just always like to close the book on those things. Yeah. You know, like when we were even talking about um the One Direction or Sis yeah right when the, there was like a week when 18 year olds were just like dropping dead yeah terrible I mean, it's just nice to like to know what what causes these things so that you know you yourself can prevent it if yeah. possible um okay it's a freaky I, world we live in i am so excited we are going to bring out brad goreski and gary Janetti, power couple tons of questions we got for them on our instagram the morning toast instagram obviously you know you got to follow it we'll be right back and we are going to be back with brad and gary We are back with two people we have gotten so many requests for on the show. I am honored, humbled, and just, oh, yeah. it, it's really, I'm in awe Incredibly to be in your humbled. presence. Thank you guys oh, so oh much for being here. Goodness. Thanks, guys, for having us. Welcome to LA. Power Thanks. couple. Can, you I, guys, can I curse? Please, please. do. <laughs> Either, I, any kind of curse? Any kind any, of curse. Well, oh, cool. Well, <laughs> not, within reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know which curse. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So you guys are literally my favorite couple. You guys are so, like, you're like a great Instagram couple, but not in an annoying way. And that's not what you set out to do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, You've we like, definitely did it. You very I organic. did not set out to annoy well, yeah, people. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely did it. But like, you guys have just so much shtick on your Instagram that is so organic that like, I just live to watch. Like, I didn't think I would ever really care about someone eating linguine. But yeah, like, neither did I. But it's everything. Are you shocked at how people are like so taken by his Instagram stories of you being a food critic? And yeah. then also your whole Starbucks order. Like, you are really yeah. like a foodie. Yeah, yeah, here's my Starbucks now that I've had. Because you're right up where there's a Starbucks oh, right we? below where we're filming, you which is a nice one. You have your own drink at Starbucks, you unofficially. 
Unofficially, And yes. this is it. This is it. Yeah, what is yeah. it? It's a grande iced cafe mocha with almond milk, only two pumps of mocha, and no whipped cream. It's technically vegan. Is that right? It is, yes. ve- it's, it yeah, is no, vegan. So you can have it, Claudia. Right, yeah, everyone yeah, and knows. it's really I'm, good. Like, it's <laughs> vegan, gluten-free, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's super good. dairy-free. Yeah. It yeah. looks really good. It yeah. is good. How many of those do you have a day, Gary? One. This, though, I will tell you, is my second. I will not finish it. I will just have a few sips of it. It'll just, it's giving me a little It's like more, an accessory It's a little more personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something to kind of, you know, it's my cigarette. Yeah, <laughs> right, yes. right. It's your jewel. It's or your cocaine. jewel. Right. One yes. man's cocaine is another man's coffee. <laughs> He's another right. man's Gary. So <laughs> you it. just wrote a book. Yeah, I did. Do you mind if I cancel? Which Do you mind is if I cancel? Such a great name for a book. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about the inspiration behind that? Yeah, it's just um, their autobiographical essays, about things from my childhood, from the times so like I'm around eight till about 28 or something mm-hmm. like that. The point of you know, of my life, I was going to say your life, but it only is my life, <laughs> where you're kind of figuring shit out, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? And I, it took me years. kind of a while to actually figure stuff out, you know, yeah. how things work and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> but... um are you always always being styled? Are you always being styled by your husband? No, I just no, not usually. <laughs> <laughs> Does he, oh. Brad? Do you pick up at Gary's clothes? Never. No, really. I know. I have. I actually, when we first started going out eighteen years ago, was actually styled him. Really? Yeah. Right. I did. I mean, a little. Not. Not. I mean, he always had fashion style and was interested, but I was kind of. I guided. You know him a little bit, like, so hey, why don't we kind of, you know, elevate this a little? Wow. Uh, you can go back to the book now. I just, I just <laughs> to, well, yeah, that's, book, that's, book, that's book. what happens. So, how long does it take a person me? to write a book? A person, I don't. Well, it took me about seven months okay. to write it. Seven, yeah. seven, eight months. That's yeah, easy. I didn't know either when I set out. I had never written one before, so I was like, and I had a meeting with James Amelia, who's my editor at Flatiron Books, who's a fabulous. He's this, you know. Uh, he was so young. I was like, oh, like oh. people are in their 20s. <laughs> I'm like, oh my Jesus. You know, he came in and, you know, and we met. Basically, he was uh, from Instagram. Wow. You know, that they kind of approached me. Through DMs? Through, through um, no, through my agent, but it, but it was from my, my Instagram, well, Instagram getting, is getting the everything. Thing kind of thank you for when it was starting to kind of get really big. And um, so I was like, well, this is what I would want to write a book about. So this is what I'll do. And this is how I'll do it, you know. And I mean, and he was like, great. So then, you know, I got a book deal and I was like, I don't really know how to write a book, you know. Right. <laughs> I've never done it. Right. Like, how do you write a book? Right. The I, first I part know. is getting the deal, and then you got to yeah, write it. Yeah, and then right. you know, I shouldn't have opened my big mouth. No, <laughs> I have to actually write it. But yeah, for me, I just sit and started it and thought, let's just see, you know, where this goes. Yeah. And, and kind of what it wants to be, and it was. Uh, it ended up being something that I feel um, really good about putting out there. Yeah. But you know, when you're writing about yourself, it also makes you vulnerable in a way yeah. that I'm not when I'm doing Prince George or when right. I'm writing for Stewie or for Karen, yeah. you know, on Will and yeah. Grace. It's like, you know, it, it's there's a, a something between you and what you're putting out yeah. there. So you're a bit protected. But when you're writing about yourself, you know, you're super vulnerable. Mm-hmm. If somebody says like, they don't like it, it's like, they don't like you. you. They heart. don't like everything, yeah. you yeah. know. So um, that's kind of been interesting as, as it's about to go out into the world. So Most of our followers probably know you from your Instagram, which is right. so huge and we'll get there but you have like you are now having like a second life because what I didn't even know about you is that you were the executive producer of Will and Grace yeah yeah and you're a writer for Family Guy for Family yeah I still write at Family Guy that is so crazy yeah what like how do you like you're also like a new age influencer like it's yeah (laughs) you know what I mean like you have so many different careers which do you like better uh, you know, it's kind of, well, being behind the scenes for so long, it's been kind of fun sometimes to, you know, try out different things. Like when Brad started filming me um, on his Instagram story, I I didn't know he was even filming me a lot at the beginning. He would just post them and That's then I would get so a response and I'm like, or I would see it if he tagged me in it. I'm like, ugh. But... I didn't, I guess I was a kind of a good sport about it because I could see where, you know. Where it was going. It just felt like, what's the harm, I guess? Like, right. You know, whatever. If you, and then when we were away in Italy and we started, he was filming me a lot more when we were eating together. I, I So then I was kind of like aware, but I was like, uh, screw it. You know, I'll just like, I, I'm not going to tell him he can't right. because, you know, I'll do, we'll just, you know, just be normal yeah. and have it. But I never expected people to respond to it in other ways. Like he'd post it and I'd be like, 
people are going to be like like leaving you in droves now. No. <laughs> like, who would watch this? Your Italy you know? content, you are just like, you have a way of being silent, but like judgmental at the same time. And <laughs> I've it's, it over many, many years. It's Thank so you. impressive. I'm like, what is he thinking? <laughs> Does he like the pasta or not? <laughs> it's very interesting. And you guys are so cute. I can't believe you've been together for 18 years. I know we have. But you got married last year, right? About a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago yeah. on a boat. Yes. On a cruise ship. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Beautiful. so perfect for us. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Like, why, like, the just how, how you guys were together for so long? Did you always want to get married? No. Was it just like, a, a, do you wing it? Okay, well, we didn't always want to get married. You know what? The truth is we hadn't really talked about it much until marriage became legal. Right. And then we just always assumed we would eventually, you know, do it. But, you know, when you've, when you've been together so long and it's kind of like if it ain't broke, You're you know? You're comfortable. Yeah. yeah. But, but it was important to us, I think, to ultimately be like, you know, people have fought for this right. Right. And um, we wanted to be a part of it and yeah. we always we see ourselves i mean we are you know we always saw ourselves as married so yeah well also we wanted to our families are both so I, we're very right. close with each yeah. other's families mm -hmm. um i love you know i love my in-laws and you know my family's coming for christmas we do thanksgiving with his family we like love our families yeah and so we w just decided to do a big family vacation um over the christmas holidays on a cruise ship and we got married on it and it was just like that's so cute yeah it yeah was it was like a fun. part of the trip so it wasn't right. like it was, yeah it was part of the trip but we all got to spend time together which right. we normally wouldn't so nice like a great yeah. wedding. that sounds like a great way to do it yeah, like the, the, the guests for everyone us. really yeah, yeah. Oh my he, God. the original the captain, captain of the love boat the real oh one, of the one of the captains of the, the yeah original love he was boat. so yeah. the, everybody on that we were got married on seaborn and they were so amazing. Yeah, so it was amazing. So lovely. The cruise Especially director Ross, nice. who we both still follow on Instagram, <laughs> yeah. Ross Star Roberts. Ross was fabulous. He is everything. Yeah, he we like, had a great yeah. time, and we got to fun. yeah spend time with our families together. Yeah, so, that's so, amazing. Yeah. That's such a good way to do it. Yeah. Um, we got so many questions from okay, Instagram. Shoot. Yeah. Shoot. Uh, Speaking so of Instagram, though, really we have to talk about your, your Instagram, Instagram because you are the royal correspondent that <laughs> we deserve. <laughs> Thank you. Like, oh my god, nice. dying to know. Have you? heard from Kensington Palace in any capacity. No, none. Not through a friend of a friend? Nothing. Well, not specifically, no. Uh, no, you know, they can't actually acknowledge it. It would be beneath them it, to right. say, like, we're aware of this thing. We you think know, it's Look, funny. they don't even acknowledge, you know, any scandal. You can't acknowledge yeah. a thing. They, she, The Queen didn't acknowledge when Princess Diana died. You know, they right. made a whole movie about it, basically, because yeah. it's this sense of, you know, you don't engage in, in that kind of... Yeah, in yeah. that way. Yeah. I, I think um, so. No, to to engage in an, on an Instagram account from some guy Wouldn't from LA, like a publicist, who's, and like a, yeah, or like yeah. a, a nanny's a friend. friend of a cousin. I've people heard. Know. I've heard yeah. through people yeah. that people have seen and people have Stop. like I've, I had I, somebody told me that they were at Princess Eugenie's wedding and I was posting the whole day that about George, you know, and, and Eugenie, and he thought she was one of the maids. He was like, oh, shit, I thought she was one of the maids, you know? Like, and, then, and then Beatrice comes out, it's like, oh, shit, she's not a maid either. Like, and it was just because it was like the faces he was making. Right. So, you know, I kind of match what I'm getting with what, you know, the situation is. And then I kind of come up with the story from there. So I, um, somebody reached out to me that they were at the wedding and he was sharing it as I was posting at her wedding with the people at, at his God. table at her wedding. Some <gasps> loving, some right. also thinking some... this is outrageous <laughs> that you're doing this at the wedding. Yeah. But that I'm, so, so that funny. was kind of funny to find out. Oh, that's, that's crazy. crazy. I can't believe how big your Instagram is. Like, I remember when you had like 30,000 followers yeah, and now you're you reaching were, a million. You were early. I was an yeah. early adapter. Uh, you were very early adapter. Adapter. You were on board very early. early. We saw each other in Montauk. Like, yes. I, I had only been posting oh, about a month. That was even before at Scarpetta. And that was before George. George. You, yeah, right. You used to post just oh, like um, black text, text and yeah, those yeah. were so funny. Which I still do um, occasionally. I but love yeah. George, those. George, George wanted, took over. George really barreled his way in. Oh my God. Over. <laughs> okay, this is from Allie Weinreb for Brad. Who has been your favorite celebrity to style? You style everyone who's cool. Um, Who do you think is like the most fun to work with and like most willing to take risks? Oh my God. I am lucky, you know, if you, I, my clients are always on my Instagram. Yeah. So it's like a party with all of them. We it looks fun. So much fun. I mean, they're all great. Like I dance with Jenna. I laugh with Leah and Kaylee and Sarah. You know, I work with great women mm -hmm. that, um, you know, are super funny and make my job really, really easy. So it's hard to pick one because we're always, it's like a sleepover. Yeah. We just have the best time. And you also do the E red carpet pre-show a yeah, lot is that countdown. that looks like so much work it, like in no. the heat 
Oh, I live. Oh, you do you? Yeah, I love it so much. I love you in your shorts, but like a full tuxedo on top, you know? Yeah, I'm not playing around. Genius, genius. I've been doing this for a while, so I, you know, it's always really hot on the Emmys, and I just said to, um, you know, the my my friends at E! before we went live, I was like, do you mind if I don't wear pants and I just wear my gym shorts? Yeah. They're like... No, this is the first year without the see-through table, so I oh. took advantage of it. Oh, I didn't realize the table's always see-through. That's a good point. New yeah. table. Worked in our worked in our favor. That is so smart. This yeah. is also for Brad from Parker Hill. I've been feeling bored of my fashion choices. What advice do you have to freshen up your look slash style and bring in a new edge? Um, I say gently dip your toe into trends through accessories. Oh, that's good. Um, if you don't want to take the big, you know, the big plunge and wear like all animal print or wear all neon or um, brocade or all of those things, you can incorporate those through your footwear, your clutch, your, you can get like a cute little jacket or just like an animal print shirt and wear it with jeans. Um, I love an animal yeah, print Yeah, I'm learning shirt. too. Like, oh, I think I need animal print. Yeah. You definitely need animal print. Okay, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna go for it. Yeah. What do you think are the best stores for like affordable pieces, like every day? I'm a big online shopper. Yeah. Same. So I shop on like Amazon. Oh. I shop on Mr. Porter. Okay. I shop all over the place. But I don't love being in a store. Me neither. It's uh, so much work. No, no yeah, I'm like, I don't, I don't if I can't Porter. find my size, Same. like usually when we wake up in the morning, he's reading the New York Times and I'm like scrolling on like right. shopping. Net Porter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I I shop all over the place. Target. I just got an outfit that you know, those buffalo plaid, the black and red pants I've been wearing. I've got those at Target the other day. Like yeah, I love you Target. guys. I love a bargain. I love a Target. Yeah, it needs to be like fifty percent off or more. We got a question for you that we were both dying to know. ask your opinion because on. Yeah. last week we reported on that YouTuber girl who crashed the Chanel fashion show. Yeah, and I would love as your take as someone who's probably been to a Chanel fashion show. Yeah, what? What are your thoughts? What are your on thoughts? That? I thought it was amazing. You did? <laughs> yes. Oh my god! Did you not think like it was just so fucking rude? No, I thought it was kind of incredible. Oh my god! Elaborate. Come on, any time that like somebody is doing something to shake up something that's like very formulaic and taken very seriously. Yeah, very rigid. regimented. Yeah, yeah it was just rigid. kind of, I just thought it was kind of such a great, innocent risk, you know? Wow, and I so thought, interesting. I yeah. thought that Gigi Hadid also really did a good job in dealing with it. Ma like maintaining the situation. Yeah, because I'm like, that's a pro. Like that's somebody who, you know, she made, she let that thing kind of happen and then very tidily cleaned it up. Yeah. You know, which yeah. could have been like kind of a bigger Disaster. mess with all those models walking. Like she knew how to deal with that. And I, you know, I think a lot of people are going to dress up like the Chanel show Crasher for Halloween. Oh, that's a great prediction. It's a great costume, oh, though. Yeah, it is. Good costume. Did you think super she niche? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Black and white. Yeah, I'm not I just wearing Chanel. I love I'm the Crasher. <laughs> was she wearing Chanel? She was wearing like a like, tweed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did it, you think she did a good Chanel. job of <laughs> blending in? Like, how do you rate her outfit? Her shoes were wedges. The, the shoe, the footwear threw me off. Yeah. Agreed. That's yeah. how we knew it wasn't real. Yeah. yeah. But I, you know, nobody got hurt. And I think in this day and age when we can kind of like yeah, laugh about funny. things, I think it's a big risk that, that I think paid <laughs> off. And I think people were, you know, sometimes yeah. we need to get like a little shaken also, up. Also, fashion takes itself so seriously. So seriously. It's the most ridiculous. It's the thing that should take itself the least serious. Yeah. And it takes itself the most seriously. Yeah. So the fact that somebody kind of came in and was playful. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you're changing my mind. That's an interesting spin. I didn't think of it that way. And also it was a win-win situation. Like nobody got hurt. Gigi looked great. We all got to see more of the Chanel show than we right. would have. Yeah. Because How it was wasn't. How going to get hurt? They, it's like people can stop walking. It's yeah. not like they're. <laughs> I can't, can't stop. I'm going to get that <laughs> Sorry, you're you're gonna gonna be there. Yeah. Keep going. Right. You never yeah. know. Like, she didn't jump into continued. traffic. She didn't have a knife. One like, of those girls might have just like pushed her off the <laughs> right. runway, oh you know. God, it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, Chanel show crasher. Yeah. That's yeah. a great Halloween costume. It's good. Um, Gary, this is from Lady Wushu. Is anyone on Will and Grace Will and Grace or any storyline from Will and Grace based loosely on your life or anything that ever happened to you? Specific. Yeah, there was one uh, one thing that I wrote. It was um, uh, Will uh, and Grace went to Will's mom's house that Blythe Danner plays, mm -hmm. and 
Grace broke uh, accidentally a, a Yadro figurine, which is something that my mother used to keep oh, no way. in her home and that my sister broke once and it <laughs> sent the two of us into this insane tailspin. Right. So it was this, it was based on that, that Grace goes into this crazy tailspin because she breaks broke Will's mom's favorite, uh, favorite Yadro figurine. So that was this very specific story yeah. that played out on the show. And I also love Blythe Danner. So um, Me too. she was fabulous. And that was exactly from my life. So that, that's so cool. That one. Gary also appeared on Will and Grace. Yes, Did I, you? I was Will's first boyfriend in an 80s, 80s flashback. flashback. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, that's so good. fun. It, it an 80s flashback episode. It was super fun. So when you were working on Will and Grace, you guys were together at the time? We were together. Yeah. We were together, yeah. That's so cute. I can't believe you guys just have so much history. That's yeah, yeah, fun. yeah. That's how you met Madonna. Tell yeah. us about that. It was everything. Was she everything? Yeah. I mean, she wasn't like... She was Warm fine. Fuzzy. <laughs> she, she was, was fine. She was, she was fine. fine. You got your picture. Right. That's picture. all that matters. Enough really said. Off the list. So it's done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I want you to play a game with me, Gary, about the royal children. Okay. I actually know. Before I do that, I actually have a question. Do you ever feel like you have taken it too far? No. In your jokes? No. 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 You haven't. No, you haven't. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Do you, do you think you're more of a George or like a Charlotte? George. Oh, for yeah, like yeah. you are George? Yeah. Yeah. Do you see yourself in George? You know, I see George as a character like any character that I would write. Mm -hmm. So he, so there's a there is a part of myself in every character that I write. You know what I mean? So in as far as that goes, yes. Yeah. Um, but he, I write him as this fully like any character on a TV series. But it's so crazy because I know you like wrote this character, but like it's totally him. Like you know, yeah, that's well, what that's, he's like. That mean, I mean, that's good that you think that because it's totally. It's totally what, what he's I like. Created him yeah. to be. Obviously, he's probably the sweetest six year, six year old little kid. Sure, you know? sure, <laughs> sure. Allegedly. <laughs> you know? um, Brad, I have a question for you, and we ask everyone who comes on our show who knows Leah Michelle this question. Oh yeah, um, it's important. There is a huge conspiracy theory out there, and you either need to confirm or debunk it for us. I'm not sure if you've heard about it. Yeah. It's that Leah Michelle can't read. Right. I've never um, heard this. Oh, there's so there's much so much proof. Evidence. There's so much proof. But, um, did you send her a copy wait, of, your, of your book? Yeah. yeah, I did. We'll see if she reads it. Yeah. If she knows What's how. The evidence. Well, the evidence is that like she's never actually been seen like right. <laughs> no, it's like it's no. like, all of her Instagram this captions are just emojis. Emojis, and that like Ryan Murphy like likes working with her, and she likes working with him because, because he knows her. He knows the secret, and it's gonna and hold like it for he her. reads the scripts to her so she can memorize them. This no, she just posted just about the Reese Witherspoon book club, the book from the book club. Doesn't mean she read it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Maybe that seems like seems like something you would do to, to negate prove that you know, she definitely knows how to read. Have you ever seen her read? read? Yes, of course. Okay, okay. hundred percent. Emails during fittings, yes. like, writing. Yes, everything. Well, we, it's not like we sit down by like, candlelight with a quill pen, right. like paper, and well, I'm watching proof, her write in her the journal. The proof is that all of her headshots are like pre-signed. Like, there's never actually been a video of her signing a headshot. <laughs> Do you want me to get her to sign something? I would, if you could send me a video of just like her, like jotting something <laughs> yeah. down on a yeah, post-it. Like, Hi, I'm Claudia, seeing her on Thursday, so okay. I'll like get her to. Well, the conspiracy theory really got so this. big that she actually had to address it. I think she Never did on Watch Happens Live. So yeah, bizarre. Yeah. It is so funny. It's and one so of the better conspiracies. Like, conspiracy. But how would she yeah. learn? Like all of her parts. She like memorized right. them. They've been read to her. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Somebody read them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Do you guys also believe that like you shouldn't get a, fl a flu vaccine because it like puts Keeps a microchip you in your body? Oh, no, not no, microchip. It makes you sick. I, one year I got the flu was the year I got the flu shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you're supposed to you they you're you, to get a little you get so response to the, the symptoms yeah. and then I you. Heard the I've never heard about the That's microchip. From my mom. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> my mom thinks it's a conspiracy. It's like, are we anti vaxxers No, we're not. I think what? that's no. I vax. No. No. Yeah, we're we're not anti vaxxers yeah. The next question is: Would you ever do another reality show? Sure. Yeah. Why not? What's like your dream reality show? Like, would it be a you guys show? Would it be like a work styling show? Well, I did work styling, so maybe I would do something with her. Thanks. That's Gary. Thanks. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Well, Sam, I just don't know your like willingness. Cause are you open to it? Other stuff. You know, I don't know. Never say never. Right. Promote the book. Yeah, he's got to go on book tour first. Right. Yeah. Where are you go going cities. on book tour? Uh, I'm going to New York. I'll be in New York October 22nd uh, on the Poor Side. Then Brooklyn the 23rd. Yeah, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Toronto. Cool. Boston, International tour. Chicago. Yeah, global tour. 
Portland International. What are you going to do on tour? Like a little reading? Very casual. I'm going to read an essay from my book and I'll, oh. I guess I'll, you know, I'll meet anybody who wants to meet me, Sign whoever turns books. up. Yeah, we'll see who turns up, right? Yeah, that's so fun. Okay. Yeah, I hope oh people God. come. Do you think I'm people will. are going to come? Oh my God, I'm totally. Totally. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah that's so fun. I can't wait to tour. read the book. It sounds yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks. I love it. And you know what I like? It's not too long. I don't like it's a not long too book, long. you know? So people, people got things to do. Yeah. So yeah, like I'm yeah. reading Howard Stern's book. It's like 500 it's pages. It's a textbook. Yeah. It's a textbook. I can't even travel with it because it like is too big. Yeah, so yeah. heavy. It's like yeah. traveling with a September Mine, issue of Mine's Vogue. travel yeah, size. Yeah, you can knock it out in a few days. Um, This is from Sam Marinelli. Brad, can you please talk about your relationship with Tanya? Rad, who's coming on the show tomorrow. Yeah, oh. she told me. And are we going to get another B Rad T Rad dancing video? Yes, you will. When? Um, Is it going to be To Toast by Claudia Ashray? Oh, oh could you? you want? Yeah. Oh my God, I would die. Like, Let's, seriously, yeah. die. She actually sent it to me as a potential. Yeah, it's true. Who That's, choreographs it? We do it together. Yeah. She comes in with some ideas and then we try to like mesh them together. But we've had like three failed attempts at, <laughs> at, um, at, coming up with some good choreography. So we kind of put them to rest for a minute. Got it. But I, I'm seeing her tomorrow as well. So I have to like pitch to her that maybe we do like a Halloween theme song first. Ooh, spooky. I yeah. saw Jojo right? Siwa, Siwa did a great one. Oh, oh yeah, really? Yeah, she's very inspiring. Her song. It's like, it's <laughs> would like you, spooky rave. Would you ever, <laughs> would you ever <laughs> style face. Jojo Siwa? Sure. I'm yeah. sure he would yeah. love to. Where Why would you not? get her bows? Everywhere. Like, do, I know like, I know the guy that makes Sia's bows, so I could just go there. Oh my God. Jojo Sia. Right. Jojo Sia. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. You're um, right there. Out of space case. Brad, is there a celebrity you haven't worked with that you would kill to? Jennifer Lawrence. Ooh, oh, that's a really that's a good answer. One. Yeah. Who I, styles her? My friends, Jill and Jordan. Oh, got it. So we're, ha we're happy for them. We're so happy for them, but I just feel like, like in my fittings with like Leah, we can talk about housewives nonstop. And I feel like I could do the same with Jennifer Lawrence. 100%. Right? Who yeah. are your guys' favorite housewives? Do you watch, Gary? Uh, yeah. Lisa Renna. Lisa Renna is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Lisa too. Renna and Erica Jane. Me yeah. too. They're honestly part of my top five overall franchise. I think yeah. they're both stars. And I love, stars. Beth I love Bethany too. Liv, Bethany. how are you feeling about her absence? Yeah, I feel like the show's not going to be the same without her. I, I think Agreed. it's actually going to be re like really terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not one to be like doomsday, but it's just she's the only one with like a firm grasp on reality on that and show. And now everyone's going to get away with everything. Like Luann is never coming back down to earth. Yeah. Because Thank no one, God. Uh, yeah, right. that's true. But like, there's just no accountability. They need tell. But Mountain life is camp. a cabaret. Yeah. Why would you need to come <laughs> it down is to a Earth? Cabaret. But I like that they'll get new people and kind of pick yeah. it up. Although, but I feel like Bethany. Yeah, I'll totally. I'll but I also miss feel her. like Dorinda and Sonia kind of bring it too. Yeah. yeah, I'm not like crazy about Dorinda. I know there's like I know really he, she, she's like universally loved and like I never really got it because anytime I'd watch her in the past five years, she's like always on the wrong side of history. <laughs> You know, yeah. I never agreed with her, except this season she finally like crawled up Bethany's ass a little bit, which is where you gotta be. Like, <laughs> if, if you want to survive on that show, if I was ever on that show, I'd be so far up her ass, like I'd be coming out of her mouth, you know? <laughs> yeah, I love her. And she, everything she does is right, you know? And she's so smart. Everything she does is yeah, right. Yeah, she's saving the world. She's, she's saving, saving the, world. the world. Like, how yeah. you could disagree with her is beyond me. Yeah. yeah I think, true. do you think she'll come back to TV in, in another capacity? Yeah, she's working with Mark Burnett. They're doing, yes. they're doing reality stuff together. Yeah, she'll, she'll yeah, be fine. She's, she's a smart Oh, she's too. gonna be. Yeah. 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 Also, the, did you notice that the skinny girl brand keeps like she doesn't really like drop the product hard now, but like on her story, she'll be like, "So hungry, skinny girl ranch dressing just right. dropped." It's like it's organic content. It's like all, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. good. Good it's organic like content. Skinny yeah. girl world. Yeah. 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 Skinny girl popcorn is the best. It's yeah. The, the snack. Popcorn. She's always snacking on that. I'm like, oh, they have licorice now. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if they do. So, but, no, but they have uh, so much. Like do you watch Orange County? Yes, of we course. Watch yeah. yeah. What are you guys' thoughts on Bronwyn? I love Bronwyn. I'm actually doing Watch What Happens Live um, next week. With, with and Bronwyn? I think, I think I'm going to be with Bronwyn. Oh my, that's so cool. Have you done Watch Happens Live before? Yes. What? Have you been on Watch Happens Live before? <laughs> yeah. You have? How yeah, many yeah. times? One. Have what you, it? Gary? I'm Brad? Oh yes. <laughs> Brad, how was it? It was great. It was fun. Oh my god! It yeah, we did it together. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah when, when, Bra it when Brad's him. Brad's reality show. Oh right, I've done it twice with Kyle Richards. Ooh, cool. Wait, so and what Jesse are your what are your? Oh, and so you like Bronwyn? Yeah, I like Bronwyn a lot. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. What do you like about her? <laughs> I think I like her family. They seem kind of really lovely. Her yeah. kids are so sweet. The family seems kind of nice. 
I like her. I just feel like she brings this. There's a sweetness to her that comes out on the show. Yeah. And I think she brings a sweet energy to the show that actually goes nicely with um, some of the other women. Yeah. I it's think almost like a naivety. Of, like. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. First, it's like Denise Richards on the first season. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think she's, yeah. I think she's right. charming and she's kind of got a different thing and she's, yeah. and she's super pretty and um, and her kids are respectful, which is like very rare. Which is on so the hard franchise. to come by yeah. these days. Do you guys watch Dallas? No. no. Oh my god. Really? You I watch mean, Potomac? No. 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 Potomac? Those are the only two we don't watch. Okay, Potomac, you got to get into. I just got into it. It's really? It's phenomenal. I don't know. We know what's going on. No, it's so good. I just got into it. And like the cultural implications of the show are so crazy because Giselle is now, she was uh, divorced, but getting back together with her husband, Jamal Bryan, who's like this huge civil rights activist. And they just did a Sunday service with Kim Kardashian at his church. Like there's just so many. I'm in. Yeah, right. There's just like so much going on. And they're so like important. It's just a good show. I think it's worth it. All right. Yeah. Wait, did they just wrap up a season? Yeah, so you gotta wait. All right. Okay. And then there's like a whole sexual we'll wait assault for a jet involved. Blue flight when they're when it suddenly it'll get six episodes and then you know you can t- one flight on JetBlue to New York and yeah. suddenly addicted a whole to your season. Franchise. Yeah. Are you guys JetBlue mint people? Yeah. Yes. Is that your go-to from LA to New York? Usually. Really? Yeah. yeah who yeah. are you? Delta yeah. One. Uh, really? I don't yeah. Know. People are obsessed with Delta right There's now. There's always celebrities. I I'm seeing just it everywhere. They have that Henry new Winkler. VIP service. Yes, and they have like the at LAX they have the special place you could like go in the security right. thing. We're so I, bothered. Is there a Starbucks before? at the terminal? <laughs> I want to say New York. Oh, in, in New LA. York? In no, and you know what else there isn't? I went to that terminal once and I went to every single store and there was not a single tampon. (laughs) Oh, God. Can you believe that? It was actually like, where is Gloria Steinem? Like, it was an abomination. Really? Can you believe that? That's out of control. I went to three separate stores. Like, no, we don't carry tampons. I'm like, it was like a Hudson News. I'm like, you don't carry tampons? It's Hudson News. Yeah, it was shocking. Oh, no, they do. I get aspirin there. Yeah, they have a whole like medical. Yeah, why wouldn't they have that? I'm scared to ask, what did you do? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, nobody's business okay. she's here now yeah. so when does the book come out it comes out october 22nd to a week from a and week. it's available everywhere amazon it, it's a, you can order it pre-order it on amazon i ordered it on amazon and it's kind of it's out he everywhere in bookstores everybody's been asking me because i've been posting oh a lot yeah about i read the, the audio he book. reads the audiobook so if you buy the audiobook gary will be reading what was it. that like sitting in the studio reading your own book yeah, I kind of enjoyed that part. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's hard to read constantly without Flubbing. making any little tiny error, mm-hmm. you know, and having to go back. It gets tiring. I was yeah. just like, oh, you know, and suddenly words start looking like nonsense. Yeah. Go, it's like, is that a word? Did you is- sit in a comfortable chair? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that would be important. Yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah, how people do it on like a stool. Yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. Couple I, of carries. I, I, you know, I talk very fast. I don't talk as fast as you do. I know. It's which out is of very impressive. Thank you. Because it's I bad. get that I talk fast a lot and that I have to slow down what I'm saying. So when I'm reading it, I tend to talk faster than I can actually read. Oh, almost. they make you slow and down. I'm, yes. And I'm like, I'm going so slow. You know, it's insane. <laughs> and they're like, you're not. That's right. how you need to read it so people can understand it. And I, I understand like, you perfectly. Well, it's easier to read. Thank you. I love a talk fast, a fast talker. Um, and where can people find out more information about the book tour if they want to come? Uh, my Instagram at Gary Gennetti. My I, I have it on there. And, it's and you should just be following your Instagram it. regardless because Thanks. it's so premium, premium content Thank all day. Congratulations on the book. Thank you guys so much for coming here. We love you. The toasters love you. They were very excited. Oh, that thank you for having us. We're happy to be here. And we will see you guys tomorrow with Tanya Rad. Yay, Tanya. Hey, Bye, guys. Have a good day. Mm-hmm.